Tom Hawksley. Should Britain stay in Afghanistan for another 30 years? Should Britain stay in Afghanistan for another... This is in the light of what the British ambassador said uh, this week. Uh, it, it's a long-term thing. We're, we're going to win this, but it's a marathon rather a, than a sprint. We should be thinking not in terms of uh, years, but of decades. Should we stay there for the next 30 years? Christopher Hitchens, what's your view? I know Sir Sherrod Cooper Coles. He's a very distinguished um, public servant, great diplomat. And he knows what I hope you know too, sir, which is that the, the origin of our woes in Afghanistan is precisely that we left Afghanistan to its own devices after the expulsion of the Red Army from its territory, which we rightly supported, and allowed the, the worst and most base and uncivilized elements first to fight a terrifying civil war that burned almost all the topsoil off the country, and then on top of that barbarism to establish a, a terrifying theocracy that became the host of the parasitic uh, Al-Qaeda forces. Um, if, couldn't we just agree we've learned a little from that neglect, and that to say that it's a long-term question is to say no more than that we're interested in the whole world and in any battle between civilization and barbarism, and we should be proud that, uh, uh, that Britain is willing to play a role on that front line. Okay. Peter? Well, we haven't a clue what we're doing there. And we could carry on doing this cluelessly for 30 years, but I, I see nothing in it except more and more casualties, and very intense casualties at that, and no gain. The history of Western intervention in Afghanistan goes back a good deal further than my brother says uh, to the time of Jimmy Carter. But our interference in Afghanistan has never been successful for more than, for more than a century. People were singing the praises of, of the author George MacDonald Fraser earlier on, a man who has written wonderfully about our earlier interventions in Afghanistan and our failure there. There is no instance of any fa foreign power succeeding in, 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 in Afghanistan. And the incoherence of our own engagement is summed up by the man who was Defence Secretary at the time we sent our troops there, Comrade Dr. John Reed, uh, saying that he hoped that they would return home without a shot being fired. They didn't know what they were going to do there. They still don't know what they're doing there. I, I, I'm, as always, completely astonished by the courage, resolution and organisation of the armed forces in the face of the deprivation of equipment and money which the government subjects them to while, while expecting them to work. But they aren't doing anything of any use there and they should come home before any more of them are killed. No, no, no. That's, now, that, that's, it's awful to hear a member of the Hitchens family sounding like Harold Pinter on a bad day. Um, <laughs> look, uh, I, I, I remember Harold Wilson once was making a speech in Chatham, and he mentioned the Royal Navy, and he made the big mistake of asking a rhetorical question, saying, now, why do I stress the importance of the Royal Navy? And someone said, because you're in Chatham! Well, even if I wasn't in Aldershot, I promise you I've said this in, in, before much tougher audiences, <laughs> Um, there are two very important things that the British have contributed. One is the, uh, the, the, the so-called spring offensive of the Taliban, what we were afraid of this year. When, last year, if you remember, they were advancing in battle order, in open order, in formation towards us in Helmand province. It hasn't materialized this year. That's because a lot of our chaps killed so many of them and demoralized them so much and showed them what courage really is. Courage isn't murdering civilians and blowing yourself up in the hope of paradise it's discipline fighting, that they've, they've had to change tactics and resort just to killing random Afghans, which dooms them to defeat, which is a, a noble thing to have done. The second is this, and it has to be said, we're going to need armed forces that have seen combat against Islamic jihadism. We're going to be having to train tough young men and women in how this is done, in rough terrain against the scum of the earth, because we're going to be needing these skills and those tactics again, and I'm sorry to say, Again, it, it is going to go on for a very long time. We don't want to be living in a disarmed, inexperienced country while that's going on. Shirley Williams. Well, I have some sympathy with that because I think one has to recognize that Afghanistan is where Al-Qaeda uh, found, uh, found safety, found haven. Um, and even now, a great deal of uh, training and recruitment is going on, particularly in the areas of Waziristan between Pakistan and, and Afghanistan. Um, I think the problem is, first, that we have not in any way addressed the possibility of being there for a very long time, but rather saw it as something which would be quite quickly in and quite quickly out. And secondly, we've got to find serious allies within Afghanistan itself, because where I probably don't completely agree with Christopher is that I think you, do not, you do not win wars of this kind unless you can, have, can ally with people within the country itself who are on the same side as you are. You cannot win it 
entirely from outside. It won't work. Well, there are huge it, numbers of Afghans it, willing to fight against the Taliban. You say in blue shell. Yeah. Um, I've been to see friends recently in uh, Headley Court Rehabilitation Hospital up the road near Dorking, who fought in Afghanistan last year with the 3rd Parachute Battalion Battle Group. Um, I don't think, seeing their injuries up there, this country could put up with 30 years of the injuries that are coming back. And I don't think there's enough emphasis placed on the sort of injuries these chaps are coming back with. Because they're losing limbs and it's nothing in the papers about it or anything in the media. They're just saying soldiers injured. And it's not enough placed on it. Tony McNulty. The key, the key point to go back to the original quote was that this would not be a sprint, that we would, it would have to endure or we'd be there for some time. I hope it's not 30 years, but I, I'd have to say to uh, Hitchens Minor, I think was the phrase earlier, to Peter, to Peter, that that's what he said was arrant nonsense. It's as flippant and dangerous as it is irresponsible. Of course we need to work with forces in Afghanistan. Uh, of course we are doing much work on the political, the development side, the capacity building side, as well as the military side, currently focused on Helmand. But can uh, you as answer his point? Uh, have said, can and we need to endure because otherwise, the only answer to, 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 to Peter's point is to let the Taliban in again. And when did it somehow become fashionable to support, even if only by omission, the Taliban? Yes, uh, our colleagues uh, in, in, in terms of partners perhaps need to do more in terms of uh, coming to the uh, military for uh, themselves rather than having troops out there who aren't uh, engaging. Because but we must endure. The, the big lesson after 9-11 t- after was, as Peter said, that the West, principally the United States, once the Soviets were out, left and left a yawning vacuum and didn't allow to, or work with uh, uh, the Afghanistan this, people. This, 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 this is fantasy, if I What's the answer? So most, most of, most you of, want to walk away, leave, no, leave the of, Taliban to it again, which is grossly irresponsible. Most of Afghanistan is not under the control of the government we support. Uh, they, barely, they barely control Kabul. It is your view that and we they, should and, leave? Well, yes, yes absolutely view? we should leave. And, and it, we, uh, it's also the case that a lot of the enemies we're fighting are based in Pakistan, our supposed ally in this battle. Right. But, and but, it, but, it, the, whole, the, the thing is an absurdity. We're pretending Johnson, to be an, yeah. an, an imperial power. No, we're, we're not. Nothing no, no, we're not. The no, we're we're not. For the vanity, for the vanity of our political leaders. That's not true. For the vanity of our political leaders. I think you make many valid criticisms of the operation, and obviously far too many civilians one can make. Many, well, the, yes, far yes. too many civilians are being killed, and, and yes, also, yes, but we are not yes. trying to be an imperial power. We are trying to help. Uh, we are trying to. Our soldiers are doing a fantastic job yes. in many ways in trying to bring water supplies and humanitarian aid and and to keep uh, terrorists to and, uh, and, so and, and Al Qaeda supporting elements from coming back to power in that country. Thirty years, and, Boris? I, and I think they should be supported. And no, of course, I don't want us to be there for thirty years. But is it and right? To, is it right to say that it may take that time, which is now becoming the the I position both as far as I can tell. I, the I, hope, the I hope that we'll be, at, we'll be out long before then. But I think when people look at our attitude and our commitment uh, to the problems in the Middle East, I certainly don't think that they will be reassured if we just say that we're prepared to cut and run and leave uh, problems uh, worse mm-hmm. when we could be there helping. All right, You'll okay, do it a couple, in the couple end. Couple of points. You, 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 sir, you, sir. The sort of commitment that would be required to sustain the army out there for 30 years would be significant, and, I, and I'm, you know, major. Our, our people and our equipment will just not last. Um, it is an, the terrain, the climate, the conditions are horrendous. Are you a military man? I, am. What do you... I, I have been to Afghanistan. You've been there? Yes. When were you there? When was I there? Yeah. I was there in 2002 in right. Kabul. And, and you, sir? I think we need to broaden the effort and, from and a you, range sir. of allies. I, I no, 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 hold on, Boris, hold on. The, you support and make a commitment from yourselves to make this work. You know, professional soldiers do not want to spend their entire career serving in Afghanistan and Iraq. I accept that. But, do, but, do you, see, but you heard what uh, uh, General Sir Richard Dannett said, uh, we're in for the long haul. Do you think that was, was, was that a mistake on his part? Or do you think that shouldn't be the policy? Um, I, I, I don't really... I, if we're in for the long haul, then we need the support, the equipment and the funding. More support and more people. Yes. Uh, <laughs> 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 OK. We, we, we,